what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Plus UI based on Android 12 L and this is the version 4.6 of the Pixel Plus UI. Yes I have made a previous video on the 4.5 but this one brings a huge amount of changes in terms of the like features and stuff so I'll show you everything but let me first show you the home screen this is how it looks like of course we get the pixel launcher by default here let me actually show you the settings this is how it looks like and it has the suggestions disabling option but sadly it does not have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen which is fine you can use the launcher if you want to but with this pixel launcher we get the google's discover page to the left they work fine and if you swipe down you will get the quick setting panel and the light theme actually shows the quick setting panel as white that's cool and if you of course switch to the dark theme the quick setting panel will change to dark mode of course and if you swipe up you get the app drawer you can search for any particular app that you are looking for right there and of course the widgets are working perfectly fine and if you're looking at these android 12 l animations they work perfectly fine even in the quick setting panel if you are looking at the android 12 l kind of animations just notice they work again amazingly well let me jump into the settings and this is how the settings panel looks like right now we have the pixelizer settings there we'll get all the customizations but right now i'll show you the about section first so here inside the about section we have the pixel plus ui logo right there then we have the android version showing as android 12 but this is actually android 12 l even if you look at the doodle it's still of android 12 but yes this is android 12 l and we have the pixel plus ui version right there written as 4.6 and the device is of course Redmi Note 7 Pro. Device maintainer is sort of so huge thanks to him for this amazing ROM development. And we have the security patch of latest June 5th, 2022. So this is the latest security patch you are getting over here. And the build date, if you're noticing, is 9th June 2022. In the system panel, we have this updater right now. And you can check for updates from here, of course. And there it will show the Pixel Plus UI version again as 4.6. Let me talk about the camera. Yes, you are still getting the AMX camera as the default camera here. And the 48 megapixel mode and stuff should be working perfectly fine. Even the portrait mode is working perfectly fine. Let me actually show you the front camera is also working fine if you are noticing. And here in the video section we have 1080p 30fps video shooting with the front camera. And if you switch to the rear camera you will of course get up to 4k 30fps option. So yes you are getting all these things right out of the box and that's just awesome of course there is the pro photo shooting option but in the redmi note 7 pro there is no pro video shooting option and that's how it is but that's fine i would say you can shoot differently with the normal video mode and you can definitely shoot up to 4k 30 fps and 48 megapixel mode let me tell you does work over here no issues with that now let me just show you the quick setting panel and in here if you are noticing i have been using a bluetooth headset and with that you are seeing the bluetooth battery status right there and in the quick setting panel too it will show the bluetooth battery status and of course you can switch to the other quick setting panel you can edit and add even more quick setting toggles and stuff you're seeing all these quick setting panel toggles that you can add and let me show you which ones i have added we have the sound toggle over here if you tap and hold on it we get the volume panel and if you just tap over here you will get to see the device changing option the output device of the sound and stuff of course right now it's connected to the bluetooth device but you can of course switch to the phone speaker or something if you want to so yeah the switching is flawlessly working and here we have the dark theme the night light auto rotate hotspot and the always on display toggle is there and we have the screen recorder and stuff then we have the heads up battery saver the do not disturb and the data saver the google home controls and the extra dim feature of course talking about the power menu we are still getting the advanced reboot so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here now jumping into the settings panel right now let me show you the customization section this is how it looks like again the pixelizer i mean and in the themes we have the font style changing option then the use black theme option is there and this is actually the pitch black option right now it is present earlier it was not there as far as i remember and we have the custom colored options then the use accurate shades and the chroma factor and stuff then the linear lightness all the monet theme engine kind of stuff you will get over here in the status bar we have the clock and date customization from here you can enable the am pm style the date you can also enable even the date format you can change from right here so yes you get all these customizations let me go back we have the battery styles and from here you can change the battery styles to the icon portrait circle dotted circle etc but there is no big dotted circle or left or right landscape kind of icons over here but that's fine and the battery percentage position you can of course change then if you scroll down more we have the mic and camera privacy icons you can change or enable the brightness control is there so you can slide a finger on the status bar so yeah this feature is actually working fine as you can see 
And here we have the network kind of customizations like the Vault icon, view Wi-Fi icon, etc. Enabling options. But I don't have a SIM card in the device right now. That's why you are not seeing any Vault icon. But yes, Vault icon will appear as soon as you insert a Vault capable SIM. Let me go back. We have the quick setting panel customization. We have the battery estimates. Then there is a clear all button as well. So with this clear all buttons, we can actually see this is the clear all button and you can actually change the style of it however you want to like this one as you can see you can actually change the clear all button style that's just awesome and if you go back we have the button section here we get the system navigation gestures in the settings we have the edge long swipe or the edge gestures so that's cool and we have the gesture indicator the swipe to invoke assistant if you scroll down we have the left edge right edge customization the pill length you can actually customize if you increase the pill length this is how it will look the thickness of course is not present over here and we have the edge touch area the full screen gestures and stuff let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations you can invert their layout individually if you want to let me go back from here we have the press and hold power button to actually do the advanced reboot and the hold for assistant the menu shortcuts options are there too we have the end call by pressing the power button and we have the long press power button toggle torch then if you scroll down more we have the volume button wake and stuff and we get the gestures here we have the quick tap or this is the back tap actually and let me show you if you enable this one if you do the back tap it works perfectly fine if you are noticing and for the screenshot we also have this share edit delete and the google lens options in the quickly open camera we have this option again and we have the gesture navigation again then inside one handed mode this you can actually set to show notification or something but this is actually working fine if you are looking at it and we have the swipe to take screenshot the playback control the prevent ringing etc and in the lock screens we have the four small clock the lock screen charging info the height quick setting on secure lock screen option is there the double tap to sleep option is there of course that is working fine and if you go into the lock screen settings we have the four small clock the lock screen charging info and the double tap to sleep of course and if you go into the notifications we have the in call vibrations the blink flashlight for incoming call and the kill app button and in the misc settings we have the game space and in here we have this disable heads up and the silent ringer and stuff you can of course choose then we have the overlay menu opacity you can add any game that you want to then we have the launch music app on headset connection then the invert three button layout and the ignore window level flags and the show volume panel on the left side by the way this is how the volume panel looks like again and we can of course expand it then increase or decrease the media sound and it can change the volume output device over here if you're connected to a bluetooth device or something now jumping into the battery settings this is how it looks like you can right there see the battery percentage the battery bar shows up and if you scroll down more we have the adaptive battery preference then the pixel stats provider and stuff but the interesting thing is we can actually see the battery temperature the resigned battery capacity the current battery capacity and the charging cycles this shows as 10 cycles only because i have actually replaced the battery but if you have not replaced your battery it will show a large amount but I would say the battery life with the newer battery is amazing. Let me actually show you with this Aku battery app I have tested and it's actually showing me that I'm getting about 11 hours of screen on time. But I would say 10 hours of screen on time or 11 hours of screen on time is huge and that is because I have replaced the battery again. But if you have not, you will only get 5 to 6 hours of screen on time here. And in the health section, it shows me that I have 100% battery health because then again, it's a new battery. So yeah. The fast setting is also working with this newer battery. It is showing me as like 3500 mA or something with the 33 watt charger that I use. So yeah, fast charging also works for me. Let me go back to the sound settings and in here we have the media call ring etc. Volume controls. If you scroll down more, we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and all these settings that you get. If you scroll down more, we have the touch sound, touch vibration etc. The vibrate to indicate call status and the screenshot sound and the Mi audio enhancer is also there. You can of course choose the presets and the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth as well and with the speakers as well it was a great experience and you can of course choose the presets if you want to from right here also there is the bass booster option let me go back you can also use this clear speaker option if your speakers of the device sounds muffled or something and in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level the adaptive or auto brightness you can enable or disable it in the lock screen we have the face unlock kind of thing like the one swiping up on the lock screen this is present because i have actually enabled the face unlock and skip lock screen option is there then we have the display media cover art and the visualizer and stuff then the double line clock always show time and info is there but for the always on display i would say like it will drain a lot of battery for the redmi note 7 pro because it has a ips display so you have to keep that in mind and in here we have the dark theme the font size the display size and the night light live display and the colors Again, you can actually change and with the live display, you can actually do the color calibration like the RGB control and stuff. 
Let me go back. We have the auto rotate screen option. And of course, you are getting all the 180 degree to 70 degree rotations. And in here we have this window level blur option and the double tap to wake, double tap to sleep and the wake up unplug. And the full screen apps you can set individually. Of course, there is that notch behavior too. If you want to hide this notch on top, it will show a black border like this. So you can put it to hidden if you want to. And the ambient display customizations are there. You can customize all these ambient display settings. Let me go back from here and we have the wallpapers and styles and in here we have this change wallpaper option and there are plethora of wallpapers as you can see and of course I am using a wallpaper app for this and you can change the accent colors depending on the wallpaper or the basic color over here. The dark theme you can enable from right here too. The themed icons you can enable and inside app grid you can set it up to 5x5. Five five. Let me go back inside security this is how it looks like and in the settings. We don't get any quick unlock that might be disappointing for some and again I have changed this to when swiping up on lock screen and I have added two fingerprints and also let me actually show you right now the fingerprint scanner speed and in here if I just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks perfectly fine. Let me show you up close. As you can see it's unlocking perfectly fine I would say so no issues with the fingerprint scanner that I have had it also does that animation and if I show you this with the always on display actually enable do not disturb mode so again this is how the always on display will look like and double tap to wake here if you have always on display turned on it doesn't work i guess but if you have it turned off it actually works perfectly fine we have this off and right now if i double tap as you can see double tap to wake is working flawlessly and with that as you can see this is how it unlocks with the fingerprint scanner right now let's just enable the always on display and if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see this is how it unlocks yes it stutters for a second or something but yeah it unlocks fine but with the face unlock let me actually show you you can just swipe up on the lock screen right now it shows recognizing face and it unlocks let me try one more time so yes it takes a little bit of time but yes it unlocks fine but right now let me show you the app lock which is present in the security too here if you're noticing we have the app lock and right now you can see the protected app options and in here you can lock any particular app that you want to right now let me show you with this telegram app and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks and goes to the like place where i left it so yes app lock is working perfectly fine no issues with that talking about the basic things like the ir plaster and stuff let me show you yes the ir plaster is working perfectly without any problems also talking about the safety net yes it passes right out of the box over here so you will not find any kind of issues with the safety net or banking apps right out of the box also the DRM info stays as l1 here if you're seeing this and you can actually stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any problems and if you're wondering about the performance and stuff yes the overall like daily driving performance on this rom was great i haven't i haven't had any kind of issues over here also the split top if you want to see that this is an android 12 l feature of course and you can switch between apps just like this and yes it takes a little bit time but yes it does work over here the redmi note 7 pro has a really like older processor that's why it's like lagging a little bit but yes it works fine and even in the recent panel it stays together like the apps that you opened so yes scrolling and stuff should be working fine too over here so i would say in terms of daily driving performance it should be decent but yes the lags and stuff are there that you will notice while daily driving and here are the n21 geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build so let me in the comments what do you guys think about this latest pixel plus ui or ppui version 4.6 on the redmi note 7 pro i feel this is one of the best options if you want to get a lot of customizations on top of Android 12 L on your Redmi Note 7 Pro with ANX camera and stuff there. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.